In this example, we want to determine where or on what intervals a function is concave up and concave down, as well as state any points of inflection. So let's start with a quick review of concavity. If the second derivative is positive on an interval, then a function is concave up. If the second derivative is negative on an interval, then the function is concave down. An easy way to remember this is to remember the smiley face here with plus signs as eyes, or with a frown with two minus signs as eyes. And then where a function changes concavity, we have a point of inflection. So looking at this graph here, you can see that on this interval here, the function is concave down. And on this interval here, the function is concave up. So it changes concavity at this point right here, which would be a point of inflection. So the test to determine the concavity and points of inflection of a function is almost exactly the same as how to determine when a function is increasing or decreasing, as well as relative extrema using the first derivative. The first derivative tells us whether a function is increasing or decreasing, but the second derivative tells us whether a function is concave up or concave down. So what we have to do is start by determining where the second derivative is undefined or equal to zero, and these will be possible points of inflection. But in order to determine the second derivative, we first have to determine the first derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 12x squared, and the derivative of 3 would be 0. So now we can determine the second derivative and see where it's equal to 0 or undefined. So we'd have 12x squared minus 24x. Now there are no values of x where this function would be undefined, so we'll go ahead and set it equal to 0 and solve. And again, the solutions to this equation will be the locations of possible points of inflection, which again is where a function changes concavity. So this is factorable. The greatest common factor would be 12x. That leave us with x minus 2. So this equation is equal to 0 when 12x is equal to 0 and when x minus 2 is equal to 0. So we have possible points of inflection at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So now we'll take these two values and divide the domain of the function into three different intervals. Since the domain of the given function is all real numbers, and we're trying to determine where the second derivative is positive or negative, we'll plot where it's equal to 0 at 0 and at 2. And now we'll test the sign of the second derivative on the left, in the middle, and on the right. So let's go ahead and set this up in a table. So remember that the possible points of inflections occurred at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So given these two values, we had three intervals from negative infinity to 0, from 0 to 2, and from 2 to infinity. And now we're going to pick a test value in each of these intervals to substitute into the second derivative to see if the second derivative is positive or negative. And then from that information, we can draw all the conclusions that we need. So let's select negative 1 in this interval for our test value. We'll select positive 1 here, and we'll select positive 3 here. And now we're going to substitute these x values into our second derivative, which is here from the previous slide. So we need to determine f double prime of negative 1, f double prime of 1, and f double prime of 3. So we're going to have 12 times negative 1 squared minus 24 times negative 1. This is going to be positive 12 plus 24, that's 36, which means the second derivative is positive on this entire interval. And then f double prime of 1 would be 12 times positive 1 squared minus 24 times positive 1. Well, this is going to be 12 minus 24, that's negative 12. So the second derivative is negative on this interval. And now we need to replace x with 3. Well, this is going to be 9 times 12, that's going to be 108, minus 72, which is equal to 36. So the second derivative is positive on this interval. 
So because the second derivative is positive on this entire interval, that means the function is concave up on this interval. The second derivative is negative on this interval, so it's concave down. And then it's positive on the interval from 2 to infinity, which means now it's concave up again. So before we check this graphically, let's record the information below. So the function is concave up on the interval from negative infinity to 0 and from 2 to infinity. It's only concave down on the open interval from 0 to 2. Now for the points of inflection, notice that at x equals 0, the function does change concavity. It changes from concave up to concave down. So we do have a point of inflection at 0. We don't know the y-coordinate yet. But notice how the function also changes concavity at x equals 2. It changes from concave down to concave up. So to determine the y-coordinates of the points of inflection, we do have to evaluate the original function at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So let's finish by doing that. And here's the original function. So f of 0 would be 0 minus 0 plus 3. So the y-coordinate would be 3 for this point of inflection. And then for f of 2, we'd have 2 to the 4th minus 4 times 2 cubed plus 3. Here we'll have 16 minus 4 times 8. That's 32 plus 3. So this will be 16 minus 32. That's negative 16 plus 3. It's negative 13. Now let's go ahead and check all of this work graphically. Notice from negative infinity to 0, the function is concave up. And then from 0 to 2, we can see the function is concave down. And then from 2 to infinity, the function is concave up again. So we do have a point of inflection here at 2, negative 13, as well as at the point 0, 3. So our work does check. I hope this was helpful.